Eric Darrell Smith, age 30, lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Eric's girlfriend was Christine Smith, age 32. Christine and Durell have one son together, four-month-old Lamello Smith. Christine had four other children from a previous relationship which will remain unnamed due to privacy reasons. The couple had a very rocky relationship with constant arguing. Eventually the fighting became too much for Christine and she decided to end the relationship. She moved to East Baton Rouge Parish in Baker, Louisiana. She worked at the local Walmart. Eric Smith had a temper. Previously when he worked for Jack in the Box, he got into an altercation with the manager, and the police had to be called resulting in charges being pressed. The manager reported that Smith threw a cup at him which led to a cut on his fingers. Smith was subsequently arrested, and charged with battery. He paid a $3,000 bail and was later released. After Christine separated from Smith, even though he was giving her a rough time, she tried to keep the matter private and not involve the authorities. However, as things began to escalate she started fearing for her and her children's lives. On May 3rd in 2021 Christine was at her home with her four-month-old son and one of her daughters. Her nephew Brandon Baker, age 26, dropped by and the two were talking. Eric showed up, and wanted to talk with Christine. The two went into the bedroom. After a few moments shots rang out from the bedroom, and Eric exited the bedroom holding his son. He then shot Brandon. Christine's daughter was able to flee the home to a neighbor, and 911 was called. Police arrived at the scene and found 32-year-old Christine Smith, and her nephew 26-year-old Brandon Baker. Both were dead from gunshot wounds. Police quickly determined that Eric Smith had fled the scene with his four-month-old son, Lamello. Police were able to track Smith's location by his cell phone. He was located headed toward Mississippi. Police officers began chasing the suspect. Soon other jurisdictions also joined the chase. Once Smith's car crossed over into Mississippi more agencies got involved, and an attempt was made using a spike strip at the 11-mile marker of Interstate 10. Smith grabbed his son, used him as a shield, got out of the car, and shot toward the officers. Officers did not return fire in fear of harming the child. He then walked around the front of the vehicle. It's unclear what he was doing. Smith then got back into his car and began driving on flat tires. Meanwhile police were making attempts to call Smith to negotiate a peaceful surrender, but he ignored their calls. Police noticed that Smith was using the baby as a shield, holding him near his chest while driving at 10 miles per hour. The pursuit continued through several jurisdictions with Smith continuing to hold his infant son against his chest. Officers near the car told dispatchers that he was holding the baby against his chest in one hand and a gun in the other hand. At the 40-mile marker on Interstate 10, a deputy forced Smith's vehicle off the road, and both Smith and the deputy's vehicle became stuck in the mud. The deputy exited the vehicle and ran toward the road away from Smith and out of his line of fire, but then noticed his canine had jumped out of the car so he had to run back. He put himself back into the line of fire in an attempt to catch his dog. As a result he was in Smith's direct line of fire. Smith rolled down his window and pointed the gun at the deputy, and fired. The shot did not hit the deputy, but struck a nearby patrol car. After firing, police officers returned fire. A motorist recorded this video of the shooting. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. He's got a baby in the car too. They need to get that baby out. When the gunfire stopped, the officers moved toward the driver door of the suspect's car. The driver's window was rolled down, and Smith appeared lifeless. As they got closer they noticed he still had his infant, son clinched tightly against his chest. The baby's front was facing his chest. Upon closer observation, they noticed the baby had a bullet hole in the center of his back. However the baby did move his head toward the officers and began crying. Eric Darrell Smith was shot three times, and three-month-old Lamello was hit once in the back. An officer grabbed the infant through the window and carried him to his vehicle. Another officer who was also a medic took possession of the injured child, and began medical care. Another officer removed Eric Smith from the driver's seat of the vehicle and CPR was performed in an attempt to save his life. At 3.57 p.m. paramedics pronounced Eric Smith dead. The baby was rushed by ambulance to USA Trauma Center in Mobile, Alabama. An officer followed the ambulance to the hospital since there was no relatives to maintain supervision of the child. The emergency room doctor advised the officer that the bullet entered through his back, traveled through his right lung, and stopped in his rib. The doctor advised there would be no surgery, and the projectile would most likely stay inside the infant because of where it was located. Not long after the doctor gave an update baby Lamello's vital signs started dropping. The medical team worked to stabilize him, then transferred him to the women's and children's hospital. He continued to deteriorate and was pronounced dead at 1.32 am the following morning. It was unclear if the gunshot that struck baby Lamello was from his own father or an officer. The Mississippi Highway Patrol officer escorted the officers involved to the patrol building located at 16741 Highway 67. The officers were photographed, and their weapons were all taken as evidence. Biloxi crime scene investigators processed the scene of the crime. Spent shell casings were found on the roadway between the police cars and the suspect's vehicle. A bullet hole was observed in the driver's rear side on a Harrison County Sheriff's car. Inside the suspect's vehicle, between the console and driver's seat, police recovered a Taurus G2C 9mm handgun with an extended magazine. Inside Smith's pockets police discovered an extra full 9mm magazine, and his Galaxy cell phone. The crime scene was extensively measured, photographed and video footage was taken. After autopsies were performed on Eric and Lamello, and slugs removed, it was determined that the bullet that struck the child came from an officer's gun. Eric Smith's autopsy showed he was grazed in the top of the head, shot in the chest, and another shot to the forehead that lodged in the back of his skull. Black Lives Matter in Mississippi called for the release of the police body camera footage of the shooting. We want to have a coherent, truthful conversation about what happened, and how this could have been avoided, Anastasia Doctor, a Black Lives Matter board member and army veteran told reporters. If this was a white man with a white child, would they have done the same thing? A neighbor questioned why officers from multiple jurisdictions couldn't de-escalate the situation without the use of deadly force. Knowing there was an infant in the vehicle, where were their hearts? Where is the concern for the black people that were in that vehicle? A total disregard for black lives. An instructor at Washington's Criminal Justice Training Center said the situation is a difficult one for officers. They have to make quick decisions for the safety of the public. 
by law officers are allowed to pursue someone suspected of a crime, and allowed to use deadly force if they have reasonable suspicion that the person has committed a violent crime, and that person is an immediate threat to public safety. There's no amount of training that we can give, when you are now balancing your own life, and you are being shot at, and then not returning fire because there's an innocent person in the vicinity or even in the vehicle, he told the reporters. I know that's not much of an answer, it's just there's just no amount of training I think that we can do that gives you this answer, like the binary code, to go do this. The results of their investigation was then handed over to a Harrison County Grand Jury, which found no criminal culpability by the law enforcement. Although the Grand Jury didn't recommend charging the officers, they did advise that law enforcement agencies need to address procedures and implement training related to communication and chain of command in multi-jurisdictional cases. Lashonda Parker, a cousin to Lamello, said she feels that justice was not done. She felt the officers got off easy. She said she never received an apology from anyone over what she described as a pretty messed up situation. She felt like someone should have been suspended or fired. The Mississippi Public Safety Commissioner Sean Tyndall told reporters that Lamello's death was the direct action of his own father, he called Smith's actions violent and reckless. Although all of the agencies involved took several steps to prevent this tragic outcome, Lamello Parker's life was needlessly taken as a direct result of the violent actions of his father, Eric Smith, Tyndall said. Christine Parker's best friend, Jessica Williams told reporters that the entire incident feels like a dream she wished never came true. She said, she thought she could handle the situation on her own. The more she could, it was just too much. I mean, she got to a point where she just didn't know what to do. A family friend, Pastor Robert Scott, said he has known the Parkers for years. He hopes that people in the same situation will see this, talk about it more, and get the help that's out there. Get help now so this situation won't become your situation, he continued. Walmart lost a great worker. The community lost a sweet, and loving young lady. The children lost a parent that loved them dearly. Christine Parker's other children are now living with her first cousin, Lashonda Parker. Parker told reporters the nine-year-old that was in the home at the time of the shootings is now getting therapy to cope with the trauma. A joint graveside funeral was held on May 15 in 2021. Eric Smith had a dangerous temper. When his girlfriend couldn't take his behavior any longer, she left and took their son with her. Instead of moving on, or trying to fix himself, he chose revenge. He murdered his girlfriend and her nephew, then kidnapped his infant son. He used his own child as a human shield. His actions directly caused the death of his son. He was a coward who deserved death, but his innocent baby did not. Studies show that when a woman leaves her partner it's the most dangerous time. It may be best if when leaving an abusive partner to pack up and leave the entire area, move far away, and don't give out your address. May all the victims rest in peace. That concludes this episode. Keep your eye out for the next volume, coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Want to help support the channel you love, and get something in return? Simply purchase some Elizabeth's Chronicles merch. We have coffee mugs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, cozy blankets, beach towels, phone covers and more. Use the coupon code EC10OFF4U and get 10% off your order. The link to order is in the description area below this video. Thanks for helping Elizabeth's Chronicles continue to make the videos you love.